Faith always opens a door for God to work. Every time that you pray for someone else and you really pray in faith, it opens a door for God to try to do something in their life. I'm going to do a series on confrontation. Confrontation. We're going to talk tonight and tomorrow morning about confronting fear. Because you just might as well realize that the feeling of fear is never going to completely go away in our lives. When the Bible says fear not, it doesn't mean don't feel fear. It means when you feel fear, keep going forward doing what you believe that you're supposed to do. You're not a coward if you feel fear. We're only cowardly when we give in to that feeling and when we do that, we end up obeying what the enemy wants for us and disobeying God. Fear prevents forward progress. Is there anyone here who ever feels like that you have let fear keep you from doing what you know you were supposed to be doing? Let's see. All right. So we have to talk about confronting fear. It was a great revelation to me when I finally realized that I couldn't control the feeling of fear. That at various times, whether it was a new situation or a difficult situation or a situation where it appeared that there was no answer, that I was likely to feel fear, but that I could learn to do it afraid. I could still do what I believed that God wanted me to do, even though I was shaking, sweating, nervous, whatever kind of physical manifestations we get from fear. We'll also be talking this weekend about confronting circumstances and situations in our life. We'll talk about confronting the past. We'll talk about boldly confronting the future. We're going to talk about even some confrontation with people that try to control us, that try to manipulate us. Confrontation is something that most people hate, but it is something that if you don't do, in your life. If you don't learn how to confront the devil, if you don't learn how to stand up to and confront circumstances and situations, if you don't learn that sometimes you're going to have to confront people, then I can tell you that you will have a miserable life and you will never end up doing what you were created for. People say, I hate confrontation. I'm just not good at confrontation. Well, I don't know of anybody that loves it, but I can tell you that you have to learn how to do it, and you have to learn how to do it properly. So, Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We believe that everybody is going to be helped. I believe everybody needs this word, including me. So I'll just start by preaching to me and let everybody else listen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Exodus 14. I'm just so glad that God called me to preach because I get to hear and I always tell people, if you don't like it, I'll just preach to myself. The Israelites begged God to get them out of Egypt. They were slaves there. I'm sure they prayed for quite a long time. God delivered them. He brought them out of Egypt. With a mighty hand, He brought them out of Egypt. God really just showed out all kinds of miracles and signs and wonders. I mean, things that should have turned them into a solid rock of faith, and you would think with the things that they saw, they would never, ever, ever again doubt God or have any kind of fear. But lo and behold, they're out in the wilderness now, and God purposely led them right into the Red Sea. The Bible says that there was a route that He could have taken them that was nearer, that would have taken them around the Red Sea, but because they were not yet ready for war, very interesting statement. He took them right dead into the Red Sea, and when they looked back, the Egyptian army was coming after them. That's what you call being between a rock and a hard place. Just a little note as an aside, God does not always take us the easy way. That's why many times in our life we just don't understand what's going on, and it seems so unfair. And We know that God is God, and surely there could have been an easier way for Him to have done what He's doing. And yet it just seems like that everything in life is hard, hard, hard. Well, he was leading them into the promised land, 
But he knew that even when they got there, they were still going to have enemies and they weren't ready to face those enemies. Do you think that just because I'm in ministry that I don't face enemies? There are people sitting here tonight who would love to be the worship leader in your church. You would love to, to preach. You would love to own your own business. We have different things that we want. But you have to understand that new level always means new devil. So to pray for any kind of promotion and not be ready to confront what's going to come with it is completely foolish. Now, I didn't know that when God first called me to do what I'm doing. And I had to learn, just like we all have to learn, that the devil is not going to roll out the red carpet because we decide to get saved, because we decide to get filled with the Holy Spirit, because we decide to start tithing, because we decide to actually get over being selfish and self-centered and actually start living like a Christian and being a blessing to other people. Any time that we make any kind of forward progress, any time that we make any kind of forward progress, now listen to me, any time that we make any kind of forward progress, Satan will take a step against us to see if we'll crawl back in our hole. That's why you got to learn how to stand your ground and say, if God be for me, who can be against me? If God is on my side, whom shall I fear? And sometimes you have to be willing to stand your ground and even go through some things and even suffer. You know, I had to suffer the loss of reputation with the people that I knew in order to do what I'm doing today. I got put out of my church. I lost my friends because women didn't do what I'm doing 35 years ago. Everything about having a relationship with God doesn't always feel good to your flesh, but it sure is worth it in the end. It sure is worth it in the end. Don't lose your destiny. Don't lose your God-ordained destiny just because you want to keep yourself comfortable right now. Because if you find comfort for your flesh, you will surely be miserable in your spirit. But if you will go all the way through with God, your flesh might be a little uncomfortable temporarily, but you'll have a peace and a joy inside that will more than make up. There's nothing, 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 nothing better than knowing God Amen. and knowing that you are right in the middle of God's will for your life. There's nothing you can own that's any better than that. There's no position you can have that's any better than that. There's no person you can have in your life that's any better than that. Nothing can satisfy us like God. So here the Israelites find themselves in a terrible situation. They'd come out of a terrible situation into a terrible situation. They looked at the Red Sea. They looked behind them at the Egyptian army. And their answer to their dilemma was to go back where they came from. Pitiful. They would have rather ran back to what they were used to, even though what they were used to was tormenting to them, rather than face the unknown. There are millions of people who stay in miserable situations because of the fear of the unknown. We're built for change. We're built by God for variety, for freshness, for newness. We crave it, we want it, but we're petrified of it. You need to get over the fear of change. Just because you've never done something before doesn't mean that it's not going to be a good thing. So I want you to think about the situation they were in. Just think about the Red Sea in front of you, the Egyptian army behind you. You've come out of this mess in Egypt. You've been a slave for all these years. Now what are you going to do? Verse 13, Moses told the people, fear not, stand still, firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you will never see again. Stand still and see 
the salvation of the Lord. The word fear means to run or to take flight. So when we give in to fear, we always run away from something that we should be confronting. God wanted them to go forward into the unknown. God wanted them to be so fed up with bondage that they would even say, if I step into that Red Sea and drown, it's better than to go back where I came from. God wanted them to be bold and courageous, and He wants us to be bold and courageous. And He said, stand still. I think that's an interesting statement because when the emotion of fear has a hold of us and our minds are just thinking one crazy thing after another, the first thing we need to do is get still and get out of the emotion, out of our own head, and check with our heart and say, what is God saying in this situation? And maybe some of you are in that place right now in your life. Maybe some of you watch it by television right now. You're in that place in your life. And you feel like you're between the rock and the hard place. You feel like you're between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea. And all of your emotions are going haywire and your mind's going haywire. And you've been calling up all your friends who don't even know what they're doing, asking them what you ought to do. <laughs> what a useless thing that is. Well, what do you think I should do? Well, what do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? Have you looked at them? They don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> we need to get a little advice from God. We need to stand still, get a word from God, and then do what we believe God's telling us to do, and we will see the salvation of the Lord, which He will work for us. Verse 15 says, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? And I love this next part. Tell the people of Israel to go forward. And you know what? That's the word of the Lord to you tonight. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Don't look back. Don't go back. Don't run back. Don't run away from. Go forward. If you've made up your mind to do something and the way has been rough and hard, go forward. Get the attitude, I don't care how hard it is, I'm going to do what God told me to do. I don't care how long it takes, I'm going to do what God told me to do. I don't care what it costs, I'm going to do what God told me to do. I'm just pleading with you tonight to go all the way through with God. Please, please, please don't give up, even though it's hard, even though you feel like you've got the Red Sea in front of you and the Egyptian army behind you. I beg you not to give up, but to press through and to be all that God wants you to be. Do all that He wants you to do so you can have all that He wants you to have. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. Please, please, please don't give up. I had so much fear and so much confusion and so much turmoil on the inside of me and now I've just, I'm so peaceful and I have joy and I, I enjoy every day of my life. It doesn't really make me too much difference where I'm at. I enjoy it. And I was just thinking sitting over there how peaceful I was waiting to come up here and what a mess I used to be. <laughs> I mean, is there anybody that's tired of confusion and anxiety and fear and worry and every kind of torment and insecurity and all the baggage that goes along with that. Well, I want to tell you that God is no respecter of persons. This is not just something God does for me or a few select few. The promises of God are for whosoever will. Amen. Not just whosoever will have the promise, but whosoever will do what God requires us to do to have that promise. And God does require things of us, but the good news is, is you don't have to do it on your own. Because anything He asks you to do, He will give you the strength to do if you just won't run away from it. Let's look at Judges chapter 7, verse 2. 
Does this sound like anything that anybody thinks they might need in their life? Maybe you're here in a little bit now and you're thinking, man, I wish I would have planned to come all weekend. Well, why don't you just change your plans and just get yourself back over here in the morning? You say, well, I got to go to work. Well, maybe you could take a day of vacation. Don't call in sick, though, if you're not sick. <laughs> and there are people who would be silly enough to do that. They'd call in sick and lie so they could come to a Christian conference. Sometimes I just want to get a hold of people and just shake them till everything that's loose falls off. But you know, if you could take a day of vacation, you say, well, I'm taking a day of vacation. Oh, here's some lady preach. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Well, you know what then? You're not hungry enough for more of God in your life. And I guess you'll just have to go one more time around the mountain until you're willing to just be radical and do whatever you need to do. In Judges chapter 7, we see an interesting situation. Gideon, the people that were with him, were about to face a great battle. And Gideon had 32,000 soldiers. But God said to him in verse 2, the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give you the Midianites into your hands. I would think if you're getting ready to go to war, the more soldiers you had, the happier you'd be. But God said, no, you got too many soldiers to win this war. Now, why did God do that? Well, first of all, when they won, He wanted them to know that it was strictly because of Him, not because they had a lot of soldiers. <laughs> and I'm not going to preach this whole message, which is worth preaching, but I got some other things to say. But the first thing God said to him is, the first thing I want you to do is get rid of everybody that's fearful. You know, you can't accomplish much with a bunch of fearful people. All the years that I've been in ministry and worked with people, there's nothing that's more um, wearisome than to constantly deal with people that are insecure and fearful of everything because you're just constantly trying to move them along so you can do what you feel like that you're supposed to be doing. So he said, the first thing I want you to do is get rid of everybody that's fearful. Now, interestingly enough, out of the 32,000, <laughs> 22,000 were fearful. That's not a very good average. And if we can take that as any kind of a formula, <laughs> then surely we can see that we all need to hear a good message about not being afraid probably a handful of times a year. Because fear is the master spirit that Satan uses to try to control people. Now there are many ugly demons that have many different assignments, but I believe that fear is the master spirit that the enemy uses. And as I said before, and I want you to get this, God wants us to believe and to only believe. To believe no matter what it looks like. To believe no matter how long it takes. He wants us to keep our faith in Him. Without faith, we can't please God. And when we have faith, and faith often seems ridiculous, by the way, what I mean by that is we're believing God to do something and the natural looks impossible. Faith always opens a door for God to work. Every time that you pray for someone else and you really pray in faith, it opens a door for God to try to do something in their life. Now, true, they still have to let God do that, but you need to pray for people that have problems and pray for people that don't know how to pray for themselves and pray for people that are lost and pray for people that don't have their needs met because there's a world full of people that really don't know how to pray for themselves. And that ministry of praying for other people is very important because every time you do it sincerely, it gives God a little open door to try to work in somebody's life who has not, does not know how to open the door themselves. Fear, however, 
is Satan's perversion of faith. When we fear, we're believing more of what Satan says than what God says. And we don't want to do that. We want to open a door for God to work in our life. A believer in Jesus Christ can only have one attitude toward fear, and this must be their attitude. I will not fear. I will not fear. And if you're having a problem with fear, I want to challenge you to say that about a hundred times a day out loud. And keep saying it every day a hundred times until you find that you are just as bold as a lion. You know why I encourage people to say out loud what God says? Because you believe more of what you hear yourself say than what anybody else says to you. I can stand here and say to you, you should not be afraid. And you believe me. But if you start saying a hundred times a day, I will not fear. Every time you say that, it's going to give you more and more and more courage. Learn how to agree with God. Start saying what God says and stop saying what the devil says. I'm preaching better than you're acting. Now, there's a couple of scriptures that we're very familiar with. Romans 8, 31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? If God is on my side, whom shall I fear? Boy, when you quote that scripture, everybody claps. Yeah. We like to sing songs about it. But can we think about that a minute? <laughs> if God be for me. We're not talking about some ordinary person. If God be for me, who can be against me that could possibly make any difference at all? You know, there's not a lot of reasons that God gives in the Bible for why we should not live in fear. Do you know that? You can't go and find 20 reasons why we're not supposed to fear. There's basically one. Fear not for I am with you. That's it. Fear not, for I am with you. I'm for you, I love you. <laughs> There's only a few. Well, I can't help it, I just feel afraid. Well, see, that's the thing you have to understand. You can feel afraid and still not be afraid. Do you get that? Oh, if you can get that, it'll change your life. You can feel afraid and still not be afraid. Because what we feel is in our flesh, who we are comes out of our born again spirit. And God says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I will not fear. And some of you possibly have let fear rule you your whole life. And you've made excuses for it. Well, I'm just shy. It's just my personality. No, it's the devil. <laughs> and he's trying to ruin the plan that God has for your life. And if God says, fear not, then you can live without letting fear control you. I don't care what your personality is or how shy you are, you do not have to live in fear. Amen? You don't have to fear anything or anyone. Psalm 118, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. If God be for me, who can be against me? Well, if we truly understand just how much God loves us, then we can know beyond a doubt that we don't need to live in fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind.
This little boy's name is Wawin, and he's nine years old. And when he was six years old, he'd already been working in the dumps for quite a long time, digging trash out of the dumpster that could be sold for 50 or 60 cents a day. Here in Cambodia's capital, the city of Phnom Penh, when the pastor came to this village and wanted to start a school, his parents would not let him come to school at first because they couldn't afford to lose the money that he was making. But the pastor offered to pay them the same amount of money that he was actually making when he would go to work in the dump. And then they let him come to school on that basis. Well, after a short period of time, they saw such a change in him that they said, no, you don't have to pay us anymore. We want him to come to school there. So we're hoping to see the same kind of transition in hundreds and hundreds of children's lives. I don't believe that we can look at a tragic situation like this and do nothing. And I believe together we can make a huge difference in a lot of children's lives. Thank you and God bless you. De dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard. I read her book Battlefield of the Mind in prison. My stepfather, he was an abusive man towards me. I used him as an excuse for years to do drugs. I would play it out in my mind like if everybody knew my pain I was feeling, they would, they would understand why I was doing it. But I had to forgive him, and I did that in prison after reading Battlefield of the Mind, and that's what released me. You can this book bestellen via our website, joyce-meyer.nl, or telefonisch 026. 20, 22, 100.